Good morning everyone, time for another Bitcoin report. You're looking at the daily chart with a number of trend lines drawn. You can see that we were in a rising arc formation with the trend lines that I've drawn here. As the slope of the uptrend goes higher, you can see we've broken below the latest of those steep uptrends. That's pretty normal in a bull market once it gets ahead of itself. And it's happened in the past. We got ahead of ourselves here. So that's a normal scenario, but some of these other lines that are coming into play, there's the old support line here at about nine. This tick here is obviously a bad tick. I'm not sure why that data hasn't been cleared yet. It's perhaps just because the latest uh, Mt. Gox data just hasn't cleared that out yet. So we're still at about 15.75. We took a drop from yesterday of about, we were leveled off around 16.75 and then we took a pretty severe drop down in the 15s and so we're still falling along this falling trend line but we're starting to emerge from what appeared to be a blow off top and crash this type of scenario so if this were a blow off top and crash similar to the Nasdaq or other collapsed bull bear crashes then you'd see something like this which is kind of interesting because that actually corresponded with the Mt. Gox hack and we're going to get into that in a second but so just from the chart it appears that Bitcoin is following the normal consolidation after a tremendous bull run which we've seen in the past here and here and here. If we get the type of run that's explosive like we had here you can see we ran over 300 percent to the new high. This one we ran over 200 percent and this one we ran over 400 percent so tremendous strength in this market I don't see anything slowing it down, but we'll have to wait and see how the technicals work out. Now, I wanted to jump over to the topic of the day. It's really important. A couple of articles I wanted to address. Well, one's an article and one is a announcement. We've got the announcement over at Mt. Gox about a lot more detailed information about the hack. And we've also got a major media coverage of apparently of that release so I'm gonna go through both those really quick it's starting to smell a little bit like a mockingbird going on here for those of you who don't know what I'm referring to you're going to have to take the red pill and Google lame cherry so that's all I'm gonna say on that but it appears that the coordinated attack continues and it's very interesting a comment made here I encourage you to read this entire statement by Mark Karpolis Karpelis. he's the CEO of Tibian. Tibian anyway this is the company that purchased Mt. Gox so the original owner sold out and apparently it was the original owner's account that was hacked now what's a very curious statement made here that I wanted to emphasize here is Mark's statement here given the relatively small amount of damage considering what was potentially possible we have to question what the true motives of the attacker were perhaps the attack was simply not well orchestrated but the possibility exists that the attacker was more interested in making a statement hurting Mt. Gox's reputation or hurting the public image of bitcoins in general 
than he was in any monetary gain. Now, this is something I've been saying for a while. The, the thing just didn't add up. If you look at what the hacker did. Now, obviously, with this statement, we have a lot more information about what the hacker did. But again, it appears from what occurred from the hacker's actions that the hacker was more interested in crashing or crashing the perceived price rather than crashing the real price but crashing the perceived price of bitcoins by hacking the ledger at Mt. Gox. So a lot of strange elements going on here and you're gonna have to take that red pill and go way down the rabbit hole if this is what I think it is but the other thing I wanted to look at is this article by Ian Paul of PC World and what is fascinating about this is the words he uses faked bitcoins caused price crash and as you know it's the power of the headlines a lot of time a lot of times the only thing people read is the headlines of course so your trolls and shills and bashers and generally people who are challenged or either challenged mentally or dishonest they're going to seize upon this but let's look at the detail here of what he says an anonymous hacker used phony bitcoins last month to drive down the price of the online currency from seventeen dollars and fifty cents to a penny within the span of thirty minutes bitcoin exchange for mount cox has revealed the hacker was able to create two million fake BTC by manipulating the company's trading database after gaining access to a compromised administer account, administrator account. The hacker also assigned about one million dollars in phony cash to the compromised account. Okay, that's interesting. Let's look at the wording here. He assigned one million dollars in phony cash. Well, I don't know. Did he counterfeit? Was this a counterfeiting operation? I think if he did, maybe the Secret Service would be a little bit interested in one million dollars of counterfeit dollars? Hmm. So, we'll see if the Secret Service goes after this guy. But, anyway, I'm not going to go through the whole article. I think the some of the responses pretty much pointed out here this first commentator says counterfeit bitcoins are you certain of that stolen is more likely by a factor of 1000 words have meaning the next person you can't counterfeit bitcoins it was Mt. Gox's ledger that was hacked it's like me breaking into a bank like a bank in the wild west one that actually has gold but not being able to get access to the vault I can't steal the gold, so I fraudulently change the ledger so it looks like my friend has 50 gold bars in their account. Then I send them in the next day and attempt to withdraw the funds. But it turns out there aren't 50 gold bars in the vault, so they get caught and the bank shuts down and they have to do a full audit of their paperwork. So, here's the next one. This is no different than depositing an empty envelope into someone's bank account and then withdrawing the same amount of, in cash. Counterfeit is the wrong terminology here to use. And the last one I'll read. This just tells us that the author has no idea what he's talking about. Do some research on how Bitcoin blockchain works and protects against counterfeiting and double spending. Mt. Gox's database numbers have been manipulated. It doesn't mean the coins were actually counterfeited. So, here we go. Another hit piece. Another attack against the Bitcoin using lies, innuendo, false information, misinformation, and slander, etc. Wow. What are they scared of, people? I think they're really scared. So here's 
here's the statement from Mt. Gox. It's possibility that the purpose of the hack was to hurt the public image of bitcoins in general. Wow. So I'm going to continue on with my series on Don Harold's bashing of the Bitcoin, and I've got a number of parts to do on that. But I wanted to jump up real quick this morning and address this issue. It does appear that there is a coordinated and orchestrated attempt to discredit the Bitcoin. Obviously, it's not working very well. So we're going to wait and see what they do the next time the price starts spiking again. And we'll talk to you next time.